This week on 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank, CCS final week games. St. Ignatius meets Sarah, Silver Creek battles Branham, and Los Gatos meets Mountain View. This season with Valley Christian football continues as the Warriors play Midi on senior night. We have NCS volleyball title games played on Saturday and the story of the Campolindo star and the rare ailment forcing him to reinvent himself. It's all next on 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Welcome to 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. We begin this week in the Mount Hamilton Division where the Oak Grove Eagles have dominated league play with a perfect 6-0 record. Yeah, the Eagles with a one-game lead over second place Live Oak and needing a win over the third place Lincoln Lions to win the league title outright in the game played at Lincoln Friday night. The Oak Grove Eagles looking to stay undefeated in league against the Lincoln Lions. Five minutes left in the first. Lions are on the roll. Gavin Somerville dumps the screen off to a pokey Fakaosi. He makes a couple of cuts and sets up the clutch Lions first down. Moments later, Somerville hands it to Adam Aranis. He bounces outside and around the edge and in. Mighty Mouse goes in for the score. 7-0 Lincoln Lions. Oak Grove on the following drive. Jesse Miller slings it to Jaden Folsom. Jaden shakes the tackle and stretches across the goal line. The Eagles tie it at 7, 11 minutes left in the half. Four minutes now left in the half. Miller sets up in the pocket. Heaves it down to a well-covered Devin Parker who comes down with it just short of the goal line and ends up being followed by an Oak Grove field goal. Following two Oak Grove touchdowns, four minutes left in the third quarter. The Lions looking to take a shot, but here comes Isaac Bravo with other plans and the interception. Oak Grove up 25-7. The Eagles decide they're ready to close things out. Miller hands it to Malik Sumler. Malik takes one cut, and he's out of here. Sumler all the way to the house, 55 yards to seal the game. Sumler just over 1,000 yards on the season as the Eagles go to 7-0 in league, outright league champs. A terrific season for Oak Grove. North Bay sports coverage is brought to you by South County Chrysler of Marin. Captains from Balboa and Lincoln meeting at midfield before the game. The Mustangs get a safety in the first and make it 2-0 and looking for more in the second. Give it to Luis Contreras who finds a hole and turns on the Jets making his way to the one yard line. And then on the next play, Contreras punches it in to give Lincoln a 9-0 lead at the half. Balboa gets their offense going in the third. Raiden Tian Jones heaves it deep for Chris Wiley, who hauls it in. The Bucks score a few plays later, and it's 9-7 Lincoln. Balboa on the attack again late in the third, handed to Roman Banks, who breaks a couple tackles before being forced out of bounds for a huge gain. The Bucks continue their drive to begin the fourth. Gino Liu gets the handoff and powers in for six. PAT is good, and it's 14-9 Balboa in the lead. Lincoln gets the ball back after a safety late in the game. Give it to Contreras once again. Luis breaks a couple tackles and races inside the 25-yard line. And that would be a big play for the Mustangs because Kevin Murrieta nails this one from 30 yards out. His time expires to send the game to overtime tied at 14. Lincoln trying to get on the board in the first overtime, but Armani Luridge gets the tackle for the loss. The Mustangs stop the Bucks drive in the second OT, looking to end it here. It's Contreras moving the chains for Lincoln. Then just a few plays later, Murrieta will send everybody home with his 27-yard field goals. The Lincoln Mustangs win the nail-biter 17-14 in double overtime to take sole possession of first place in the City League. The Division II NCS title on the line, Marin Catholic against Carondelet. Leah LeBoy sets for Kara Geisenberger with the kill, and she gets things started early for MC. Carondelet keeping it close. Angela Addis sets for Stella Toofley, and she pounds at home, but the Wildcats take care of business defensively, too. A big block by Grace Oliva. MC takes the first set, 25-17. To the second, the Wildcats on the hunt again. Bella McGurr to Juliana Treadway for the cross-court slam. And now a nice dig from Helena Perez. Cougars Angeli Addis to Julia Haggerty, and she pummels it through. MC takes the second set. Leah LeBoy sets it up for Olivia Cooper, who sends this one to the floor. 25-19 Cats. Third set, and it's Leah LeBoy to Kara Geisberger. One more time for the big overhand. LMU is getting a good one in Geisberger. For Carondelet, Ava Merton sends it in. Carondelet fighting hard, but it's set point. And Leah LeBoy goes to Malia Gassaway, who finds the hole, pushes it over. And that's it. The Marin Catholic Wildcats win the NCS Division II championship. 
their sixth consecutive NCS title. Each week, we present the Players of the Week in a rap piece by the Hip Hop Department at the Rikus Center. Here are this week's Players of the Week. Woo! Cal High Sports Report. We at the Rikus Center. Rama Jamal, Big Murph, these are your Players of the Week. Look, I'll be honest. Go ahead. Amador Valley's on it. Yeah. Thanks to senior receiver Cal Iwan. Okay. The Dons went unbeaten in the East Bay Valley Division. Clinching the league title with a 27-0 win over Livermore. Two touchdown six catches. Cal had 162 yards of lit matches. Fire. He and his QB cannon finished the league 5-0. and Leaving competition buzzing on side It'll of the take more than a barricade to stop Jared Wade on the field. It's like he's composing a serenade with several different movements on offense and defense. Given the opponents problems they can't find a weakness mm. falling for homestead ran for 168 had 13 tackles and sealed the game's fate uh. with a clinching interception it's more than apparent who is leading the mustangs it can only be jared right his center cal high sports Adams on the beat. ramen jamal big murph bringing you your players of the week Stanford Healthcare brings us great information on sports-related injuries every week. Here's the 49ers head team physician, Dr. Timic Adams, with this week's tip. When I started out in practice, we would see athletes six months after ACL reconstruction, and as long as the graft was stable and they had good motion and strength, we patted them on the back and said, get back out there. Now you hear nine months, 12 months, even a new study saying two years. There are two main reasons why many people have trouble getting back that first year. First the need for continued strengthening and neuromuscular education. Second, and actually the most common reason, fear. That's right, fear of re-injury is a major hurdle. This can be overcome with increased reps and time, but we're gonna see many studies now looking at relaxation and guided imagery training to help get you back. Coming up, it's the Diablo Motors CCS Monster Game as Branham battles Silver Creek. And girls volleyball with the CCS Open Division title game, Midi and Sacred Heart Cathedral. I'm at work. Oh gosh, so late? I know, but guess what? What? I've saved enough to come visit you. Oh, that's such a great news. At US Bank, we believe that hard work works. And for everyone working toward a goal, we're here to help. Dodge Power Dollar Sales Event at South County Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Gilroy. We've got the power that you're looking for. New 2019 Challengers, just $18,888 after discounts and rebates. New 2019 Dodge Chargers, just $29,99. New Challenger and Charger Hellcats. When it comes to speed, come to the number one Hellcat dealer in the world. South County of Gilroy. Drive a little, save a lot. Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Tri-Counties Bank, service with solutions. 12 locations now open in the Bay Area. By DGDG.com, where we want you to be a happy car buyer. And by Diablo Motors, life's too short to drive a crummy car. We are back at Levi Stadium with the title game in the Santa Teresa division. The Brandon Bruins come into the game a perfect 9-0 with a one-game lead over both Silver Creek and Overfelt. The Bruins meeting Silver Creek Friday night. A win would mean an outright league title for Branham, but the Bruins' loss would mean the Branham would have to share the league title. It's our Diablo Motor CCS monster game and our Wesley Boone was there. Monster game, yeah. It's the final week of the regular season, and the Santa Teresa division title is at stake as Branham puts their undefeated record on the line to take on the Raiders of Silver Creek. Now, if Branham wins, it's their title outright, but if Silver Creek can pull out the victory, 
It could be a three-way tie for first place. Graham five and one, Silver Creek five and one, and Overfelt five in one. It's Branham versus Silver Creek in our Diablo Motors Monster Game. The share of the league title on the line. Silver Creek striking first. Ricky Anya finds his tight end. David Ornelas. Ornelas looks like he's going to break for the end zone. Steps out of bounds. He will actually kick the field goal. Raiders up 3 to 0. 3 to 0 at the break. Second half. Raiders threatening. Handoff to Andre Alvarado. Has some room outside to the right. Pops the brakes. Reverses field. Don't do this, kids at home. Alvarado gets the corner, though. Touchdown, Raiders. 10 to 0 in the third. Branham trying to get something going offensively. Angel Osegara has other plans, secures the interception. Raiders are pumped for the fourth. Toss to Elijah Thomas, biding his time behind his line. Finds a crease, excellent vision. Hits the sideline 58 yards later. See ya, Thomas. 171 yards on the night with this touchdown. It's 16 to 0. They can taste the title. Bruins, though, still has some fight in him. Cameron Reinhardt burst up the gut, sprinting down the sideline, cuts back towards the middle of the field, finally dragged down, but not before gaining 75 yards. That sets up this. Bruins from a yard out. Potty Wolf Graham, what a name. Punches it in, two-pointer good. Bruins only down eight. Last play of the game now. Bruins looking deep. Malik Jackson gets the pressure and the game-ending sack. Raiders just win, baby. Claim their share of the league title. The final, 16 to eight. Thomas, a big game. You think he's happy about that title? It feels amazing. You know, we got a we got a good group of guys that work hard every day at practice, and to take down a team that, that was undefeated and that was for a league title right there. And you know, I. Love my guys, everything I got. Reporting from Silver Creek, Wesley Boone, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. This is Mitty and Sacred Heart Cathedral for the CCS Open Division title. Mitty starting off strong, Sacred Heart Cathedral trying to return the serve. Check out Reagan Dryden, number 11 in the front row with the block. It's tied at four early. The Irish answer though, Skylar Kennedy bumps to Aiden Stanley who sets for Amaya Keeper who slams it to the floor. Kennedy bumping now, Stanley setting for Keeper in the corner. Good combo giving the Irish the first set, 25-23 to the second. Ryan Savini bumping for Nicola Bozzini. Perfect set for Jenna McNelly and we're tied at eight in the second. Later in the second, it's Kennedy bumping, Stanley setting, Sarah Chang with the kill, and the Irish take the second. Sacred Heart Cathedral one set away from the title, Stanley with a cross-court set for Kennedy, who gets the kill, and now Kennedy bumping, Stanley setting, and Keeper with the kill, what a strike there. The Fighting Irish win in three tough sets to secure their second CCS title in a row. Eighth in school history, Skylar Kennedy, a force all night long for the Irish, leading the way with 15 kills. Each week, 49ers prep South County Chrysler and U.S. Bank bring us the Coach of the Week Award. Here's the 49ers three-time Pro Bowl fullback Kyle Juszczyk with this week's announcement. This week's award goes to Salinas High School's head coach, Steven Zank. Coach Zank has done amazing things in his three seasons with the Cowboys, taking home at least a share of the league title every year. As a part of this award, Salinas High School will receive a $1,000 grant from the 49ers Foundation. Coach Zank will also be invited to a 49ers practice at the SAP Performance Facility, where he will be presented his award by 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan and be recognized on the field before one of our home games later in the season. Congratulations to head coach Steven Zank, this week's Charlie Wiedemeyer Memorial Coach of the Week. Albany's Construction brings us the dirty work play each week. Doing the dirty work this week is Sarah Lineman Marcellus Eisen getting in for the quarterback sack, part of a big game for the Padre defense. Marcellus doing the dirty work just like the hardworking folks at Albany's Construction. Coming up, the season with Valley Christian football as the Warriors try and bounce back from last week's tough loss. But first, take a look at our Cupertino Electric Girls Volleyball Power Rankings. I was in pain all the time. Terinia was diagnosed with spine issues from a car crash. The neurosurgery team at Stanford Healthcare came up with a way to ease her pain. Using leading edge imaging along with robotic surgery, doctors corrected Terinia's spinal condition. Stanford is one of the few hospitals in California pioneering this less invasive approach. I don't have words for it, really. It's amazing. When it matters most, patients turn to Stanford Healthcare. Discover more at stanfordhealthcarenow.org. I'm Greg Meyer, owner of Diablo Motors Auto Sales. 
Our service department employs the best luxury car technicians anywhere. Our honest, hardworking staff can handle all your maintenance and repair needs. We are experts in all luxury car repairs, so you can be confident we'll get the job done right. We handle everything from regular maintenance items like oil changes and brake jobs to bigger jobs like engine and transmission replacement. Why pay more at a dealership when our expert staff will do a top quality job at a fraction of the price? Come see us in San Ramon for all your service needs. Diablo Motors, the nice, honest, non-dealerish car store. For more than 65 years, Cupertino Electric has been delivering power and possibilities. With offices throughout California and project sites throughout the U.S., Cupertino Electric today builds renewable, commercial, utility, and data center projects for some of the most influential companies in the world. Beyond that, we are a people company. We build family, communities, and meaningful careers. Visit CEI.com today or connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or other social sites to see our openings and join our team. We're at San Benito High School and you're watching 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Yeah! We are back at Levi Stadium where we continue our series this season with Valley Christian Football. This week the Warriors finished their regular season on Senior Night. An emotional night for all of the seniors, but also a very important game as the Warriors look to rebound from last week's tough loss. The season with Valley Christian Football is brought to you by Mike LaBarbera of Terra Commercial Real Estate. But this was a chance, a legitimate chance, to go up 7-0 right here. For the first time this season, the Warriors begin the week recovering from a loss. We have a choice, okay, as a football team. The fact of the matter is, the way we got off the ball, the, the way in which we played, our body language proved that we were not in a position to give that game what it needed. We need a week of practice, focused, driven with nothing less than us getting better and curing the, the wounds that came away when we left that field on Saturday. You are still in the process of writing your legacy in our football program. Make sure you get down on paper and on the uh, scoreboard how you want it to read. The Warriors take on Midi Friday night for a chance to secure second place in the WCAL or possibly even a share of the league title. Again, similar to our last opponent, you're going to get a number of trick plays that we'll see from there. Some very, very talented players. So we've got to take those guys away and take the run game away. It's going to be a great test for our team. The final regular season home game means it's senior day. As the 26 seniors embrace the final moments they get to spend playing on top of the hill. Honestly, it's an emotional game for me, and especially after what happened last week and to be able to bounce back, especially play for our seniors, and just be able to get a win and just set the tone going in for playoffs, like, that's pretty much what we're going for here. Hey, second half is you. I think it's probably going to be like a regular game, but just more as like, this is really going to set in once the kickoff starts, that so this is going to be like my last year playing high school, like, I'm not going to get another experience like this. Might tear up in the end, but that's what we live for, that's what we play for. You know, these, these past few years being here has been you know, the best time of my life playing, playing Valley Christian football. When Corey Taylor was in elementary school, he used to attend Valley Christian games with his dad. Corey dreamed about becoming the quarterback for the Warriors. Nice job, quarterback. You know, seeing those guys on the field is just, it's inspirational, it really is. And, and being in that, in that spot now and inspiring other kids is, is, pretty, is pretty awesome. I love, I love being in that spot. You know, this senior day is going to be really special for me. Tonight we honor 26 seniors for their dedication to this program. Let's just get after these guys. For four quarters, let's make this a miserable, miserable night for the folks from Mini. You understand? Try our best to them, but you shouldn't have come. Plain and simple. Let's line up and get after these guys right now. <laughs> Thank you. 
first quarter, the senior quarterback dropping back, hitting Isaiah McElvain for the 43-yard gain. McElvain would score to finish off the drive at 7-0 Valley. Don't be rushing so hard that you let him out of there. Be under control in your gap. Let's go get him. Mitty looking to come back in the second quarter, but Anthony Madrigal records his eighth sack of his senior season. Back comes the Valley offense, and back comes Mac Isaiah busting up the field for his second TD. He's having one heck of a senior day. Mitty QB Shamir Bay finds Raymelo Murphy, who gets pushed out of bounds by McElvain. And the Monarchs looking to do that same thing, but the receiver is well defended by senior Kavir Baines, and the score remains 14-0 heading into the second half. And here comes B Mack looking for his third touchdown, a clear shot to the end zone, but it gets brought back by a holding call. Penalties a problem for Valley Christian in this one. 10 total in the game. No stupid stuff, no blocks in the back, no ball start, no holding, no nothing. Isaiah gets his third touchdown anyways with six minutes to go in the third. There to kick the PAT is senior Lucas Ramirez back after the ankle injury sidelined him half the season. Senior Michael Carini caps off the scoring and Valley takes home the win 28-0. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> so we just decided that this week we're going to come out really physical and then uh, reestablish our brand of football because, you know, we got playoffs coming up and, you know, this is a really good football team we got here and if, if we remain focused, I think we can make a run. To come back on senior night, it was really a great experience to uh, hit the field again and I'm, I'm really thankful to come back and I'm, I want to thank uh, the training staff, Kalei, and all the rest of the trainers for um, allowing me to come back and really um, get back to doing what I love and being on the field. You guys played hard. We we're physical again. That's all great, but we have got to make sure we cut the mistakes. Nine in one season is never bad. We're zero and zero now, so we're getting back to work tomorrow, okay? New season. The team awaits the final score of the St. Ignatius Sarah game to decide whether they win a share of the title or take home second place. Amen. 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 You really love that. The Warriors win and clinch at least second place dependent on the result of the Sarah St. Ignatius game on Saturday. Highlights from that game coming up in our next segment. All right, looking forward to that. Now back to the pool for NCS Water Polo. First round NCS girls playoff action with the Los Lomas Knights and San Ramon Valley Wolves. And the Wolves jump on top early. Jack and Liao to Skylar Jones to Annie Kuster who fires it in. SRV takes a 4-1 lead in the first quarter. Second quarter now and it's more Wolves. Megan Chambliss dumps it off to Sarah Peterson. From way out, Peterson goes top shelf. Wolves lead 6-1. But the Knights looking for the comeback. Ashley Cortesis battling a defender and gets the shot off. It is good. Los Lomas scores five goals in the third quarter to pull to within two. But San Ramon Valley continues to move the ball well. Chambliss to Peterson to Stanford commit Skyler Jones with the hook shot and the Wolves take a three goal lead. And that would be enough as San Ramon Valley goalie San Marovich protects the net. Awesome save here by the sophomore. San Ramon Valley wins it 10 to seven to advance to the NCS D1 semifinals where the Wolves will face top seeded Arcalanes. Invisalign brings us the Bright Smile Award each week, honoring great folks who help out the teams we cover. This week we honor Suzanne Doy from Wilcox Girls Volleyball. Suzanne is the team mom who runs the snack shack, baking food, organizing team dinners, all to help raise funds for the girls. Suzanne Doy gets our Invisalign Bright Smile Award. Coming up, our South County Chrysler Game of the Week. As promised, St. Ignatius looks for a share of the league title against Sarah. And later, it's Los Gatos and Mountain View as 49ers Cal High Sports Report continues. Visit us at vcs.net. Why choose Invisalign over other aligners? Are they comfortable and safe to wear? I asked her doctor for a better alternative to braces, and he said, Only Invisalign aligners are made with SmartTrack technology. Based on years of research, it moves teeth more comfortably and predictably than ordinary aligners. 
And in many cases, it works faster than braces. So I can develop a custom treatment plan that'll work for each of these smiles. That's why Invisalign aligners have transformed millions of smiles. Invisalign, transforming smiles, changing lives. Devcon Construction is number one in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley because of trust. 95% of our business comes from repeat customers. They know the customer is our top priority. That's why Devcon was the choice for the 49ers Stadium and for the Earthquake Stadium. DevCon was also chosen when outstanding schools like Bellarmine, the Nueva School, and Midi wanted the very best on time and on budget. Top Bay Area companies know DevCon is the best choice whether it's new construction or renovation. DevCon Construction, helping to build the best in Silicon Valley. Tri-Counties Bank presents a unique brand of service with solutions. A welcoming and listening style of banking with solutions that help improve your financial well-being. With easy access to over 32,000 surcharge-free ATMs, advanced mobile banking, banker support by phone seven days a week, and an extensive community-based branch network, you're never far from a friendly face. It's easy to switch to better banking. Tri-Counties Bank, service with solutions. 49ers Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By South County Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai. Drive a little, save a lot. By the Rikus Center, where goals and dreams become a reality. And by Stanford Healthcare. Back at Levi Stadium for our South County Chrysler Game of the Week, the West Catholic League with three teams still having dreams of a league title on the final week of league play. The Sierra Padres come into the week with a one-game lead over both St. Ignatius and Valley Christian. Yeah, the Padres were a perfect 9-0 coming into this Saturday afternoon with St. Ignatius, but if Sierra was to earn the outright league title, they would need a win against the Wildcats in San Francisco. It is our South County Chrysler Game of the Week. Aubrey was there. St. Ignatius trying to pull away with a share of the WCAL title with a win over the undefeated Sierra Padres. SI comes out ready to rumble. Teddy Buchanan launches it to Danny Ryan for the first down. Five minutes left in the first. Buchanan rides the play action and rifles it to Ryan in the back of the end zone. Wildcats up 7-0. Seven minutes left in the first half. Teddy quick in the pocket sends it deep to Ryan again. And this is quickly becoming a Buchanan and Ryan show. SI up 14-0. Sarah fresh out the half. Dominique Lampkin bouncing in, in the pocket, lobs it across the field to Terrence LaVille for the clutch first down. And a few plays later, Lampkin tosses it to Liam Kilbridge. Liam stiff arms a defender, and the Padres trail by one touchdown with five minutes left in the fourth. Wildcats trying to increase their lead, but it's blocked by Andrew Stewart. What a big play for Stewart to give the Padres a shot to tie this game up. Padres facing fourth and 11. Lampkin surveying the field. Doesn't like what he sees, escapes the pocket to his left and comes up with a huge first down for the Padres. And a few plays later, Lampkin drops back under pressure, lobs it to Terrence LaVille, who comes up with a one-handed catch and a first down. What a play by Terrence. One fifteen left in the game, Lampkin fires it to LaVille, this time at the goal line. Touchdown, Padres. The score is 14-13. The Padres' PAT is good, but SI gets a penalty for roughing the kicker, and Sarah accepts and goes for two instead. The Wildcats' defense stops the Padres at the goal line to seal the game. St. Ignatius pulls into a first-place tie with Sarah in Valley Christian, the school's first WCAL title since 2006, and we were able to wrangle up the Wildcats for a post-game interview. And here they are, the SI Wildcats! Yeah! Let me tell you something. This guy right here had some awesome catches on the day. This is our MVP. Yeah! Danny Ryan. Danny Ryan, okay. Danny, you you just won a share of the dub cow. How are you feeling? So excited. <laughs> we're all, we're, we've been working this for... We've been working for this for a while, and it's so great to be here with my brothers celebrating right now. Awesome. And next up, we're talking to QB1. This is a Teddy Buchanan. Teddy. You guys, awesome, offensively awesome. Talk about this team's performance against a very tough opponent. I mean, obviously a great team in Sarah, but, I mean, we've been working at this for a really, really long time uh, since the summer, and we've been grinding. We've we were waiting for this opportunity. We worked hard to get to this spot and just so amazing to get the victory. So I love it. Let's go. Yes. All right, all right. And last but not least, this is one of the few guys in charge of that stop 
on the goal line for the two-point conversion. Take us through that play. I mean, like we just know we had to refocus after after the the penalty, and we just we're, we're a hard-hitting team, and we just came out and did what we do best. We just stopped them. And you guys won. Guys, take us out. Let's go. Say hi to the Gun Titans as they look to upset league rival Los Gatos in the CCS final. The Cats in charge early. Emily Gouldrup to Adriana Tang to Milena Pesek who rifles at home. But the Titans were all over the floor in this one. Odea Russo to Anna Dubois outside to Rachel Grant with a cross-court finish as the Titans take the lead. And Gun will take the first. Michaela Leong, a nice dig to Dubois who dumps it over. Titans win at 25-18. Set two now. This is Hannah Slover, the Cats sensational freshman over to Tang and back to Slover for the back row kill. Great dig here by Ting, then another by Taylor Vales as Lizzie Armstrong sends it over, but Gunn goes Leong to Dubois over to Russo, who had a monster match for the Titans. Gunn wins the second, 29-27. To the third, Leong reaching way up to keep it alive to Dubois, who bumps it over to Russo. That was vicious. The Titans feeling it now. Dubois to Leong, who sets Russo, who tools it off the block. Gun up late in the third. Grant to Dubois over to Russo again, this time with the angle. And here's match point. As Leong digs to Dubois over to Russo and the sixth seeded Gun Titans upset the top seed in three tough sets. The Gun Titans are CCS Division I champions. Russo, a huge match for the victorious Titans. Lexus of Stevens Creek presents the Volunteer Award, part of the Lexus of Stevens Creek commitment to promoting volunteerism. This week's Lexus of Stevens Creek Volunteer Award goes to Leyland Thompson Wainer from Menlo Atherton Football. Layla founded her own nonprofit organization called The Playdate, which provides kids in the foster care system with free art, dance, and mindfulness classes. The program is so successful, Layla was even given grants to continue it. Layla explains why she chose to start The Playdate. So my family started providing foster care for San Mateo County about three years ago and through being introduced to that group of kids I saw that there could be a space where kids could come to find a community and not feel as isolated in their own situations. Volunteering is a great way to learn more about yourself, um, specifically if you're in a leadership role you get to know how to be flexible, be patient, and also learn how to take initiative. Coming up to the De Anza Division where Los Gatos takes on Mountain View. And the story of the Campolindo player with a rare muscle ailment changing his season. We'll meet our U.S. Bank inspirational athlete next. Back at Levi Stadium with the Los Gatos Wildcats looking to complete an outstanding regular season with a stellar 8-1 record coming into this final game. The Wildcats meeting the 7-2 Mountain View Spartans. Lots of playoff implications with this game played at Mountain View Friday night. Senior night in Mountain View as Andrew Bison Company were honored before the game. The Spartans get the running game going early, handed to Julian Daniels, who spreads to the far sideline, then decides to cut back towards the opposite sideline to move the chains. Mountain View would get a field goal a few plays later. It's 3-0 Spartans after one. More Spartans in the second. Trent Steffen sneaks it in for the touchdown, and it's 10-0 Mountain View, but back come the Wildcats later in the quarter. Yost Gervin throws it down the middle of the field to Gian Lagaman, who makes the catch inside Spartans territory. Then and just a few plays later, Gervin fires a dart to Dylan Whitfield, who hauls it in for the touchdown, and it's 10-7 Mountain View at the half. Los Gatos takes the lead late in the third. Give it to Adam Garwood, who sprints down the sideline and dives in for six. PAT good, and it's 14-10 Cats after three. The Cats dig deep into the plague book in the fourth. Gervin hands it off to Mason Holbrook, who gives it to Kyle Pinkham for the reverse, and he is gone 58 yards to the house as the Cats take a 21-10 lead late in the fourth. Mountain View trying to spark a rally late, but Aiden Schaefer gets through the line for the sack as Los Gatos wins it 21-10 to go to 9-1 on the season. Gervin and Garwood leading the charge for the victorious Los Gatos Wildcats. We saw the girls earlier in the show, and now it's time for the San Ramon Valley boys to take on Drake. The Wolves strike first. Hugh Flanders looking for an open shot. Flanders goes top shelf to put the Wolves up 2-0. 
Drake stays within reach. Bennett Steger passes to Isaiah Williams, who skips it in for the Pirates' first goal of the game. SRV showing great ball movement. Ben Libby to Wyatt Mundelius. Back to Libby, who loads up and fires it in with the skip shot. Second quarter, the Wolves on the move. Tim Kerr hits Grant Watson. Watson catches the pass and fires it in. With no hesitation, Watson had himself a night. SRV with a five-goal lead, looking to make it six, but Pirates goalie Ray Holmberg makes the save. This kid had incredible saves on the night. But the Wolves are too strong on offense. Libby with the long pass to Watson, who buries it in the corner. San Ramon Valley ends this game with six unanswered goals to win it 13-2. The Wolves go on to face Miramonte in the semis. U.S. Bank brings us stories of inspirational athletes who amaze us each week. Aubrey, tonight we meet a team leader from the Campolindo football team who had to reinvent himself this season after a strange muscle ailment disrupted the season. At practice, Jackson Wheeler wears number one. At games, he wears number 54 when he plays on the offensive line, and sometimes he wears number 82 when he plays receiver or tight end. The fact that we have no backups at any position, Jackson has had to play three different line positions. That's what he's done both offensively and defensively. Every time someone's gone down, he's the only person we can turn to. And that's the irony of all this when we thought this was someone we wouldn't have available at all. The reason Coach Macy thought Jackson might not play this season started during Jackson's junior year. Before I was diagnosed, I wasn't really sure what was going on. I just experienced a lot of soreness and weakness and a drop in energy and I kind of just uh, fought through it for the most part but eventually it just got so bad that I knew I needed to go to the doctor and figure out what was wrong. What was wrong was Jackson suffered from mitochondrial myopathy which causes permanent muscle problems. The mitochondria in my muscles aren't functioning properly and which leads to a lack of energy and leads to uh, my muscles kind of being extremely sore and extremely weak and not able to recover. During the spring practice, he looked great. He looked great at tight end. We thought, wow, we have such a weapon at tight end this year. The next thing you know, all of a sudden, his running ability shrunk way down. And then it was just a slow process, hoping something would get better. Jackson had dreamed of playing football his senior season at Campo and looked for ways to be a part of the team. He said, hey, I'll move from tight end to the offensive line because I think it'll give me a chance to maybe not have to run as much. But then once we got into the season with the pads early in the year, it almost got to the point where he wasn't even confident with that. It was a big battle to get back to be able to play football. I mean, I thought I was kind of ready to go a lot of times, and then my medical condition would kind of fight back and kind of get back at me, and I would have to kind of reset myself and reorganize myself to kind of go at it again. Once the season started, Jackson worked out a program where he would practice just twice a week to give his muscles a chance to rest up for the games. Well, I decided to step in at an uh, offensive line because I knew my team needed someone to step in. We needed someone to help contribute to the team. So I wanted to do everything I could to help out. The plan worked, and Jackson was able to play on the line and help his team. The mitochondrial myopathy is something Jackson will have to deal with the rest of his life. But he's learning there are ways to handle it and still achieve his goals. I mean, it's, it's something I just have to live with, and I think I'll, I'll get through it. Um, but just everyone has challenges in life, and I know I just have to get over mine. So now Jackson plays every game, and now with the team's starting tight end injured, Jackson will have a chance to play limited time at that position. He's the one person that led everyone into the weight room, the strongest, hardest worker. And also on top of it, we call him our moral compass of the team. You know, he had that quality of how well respected he was amongst his players, his teammates, coaches, everywhere he went, the respect level was so high for him. And if you're gonna take someone like that out of a leadership role, we just knew that it would be such a drop for the whole program. With a 4.0 GPA, Jackson plans to study computer science in college at a top university. Jackson is doing all he can to help the Cougars win this season. The team finished in a three-way tie for first place and headed to the playoffs with an 8-2 and two overall record. And hopefully he'll make an impact in these playoff games. Yeah, and maybe a couple of catches are tied in. Love it. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Well, Strong has teamed up with the 49ers with physical therapy and sports rehabilitation centers throughout the Bay Area. Each week, Well Strong brings us concussion prevention tips from their team of outstanding doctors. Here's Dr. Anthony Saglin-Benny with this week's tip. Concussion is best treated with rest, perhaps one or two days at most. Protection from further trauma to the brain is the next phase of concussion treatment, which is paired with controlled return to activity. 
Rest is no longer a long-term treatment for concussion. Safe exercise and activity are the keys to the best recovery and should be prescribed by an experienced concussion practitioner. Feel free to contact us with any questions. You can buy entire game videos from all the games we showed on the show tonight. Go to 49erscalhighsports.com to order. Go to our YouTube channel to view all of the highlights and features after we air on Sunday nights. Be sure to follow us on social media at 49erscalhigh on Twitter and on Instagram. We'll have all of the football scores from all around the Bay Area up on our Instagram on Friday nights. Coming up, our Diablo Motors NCS Monster Game, the title game in D1 Volleyball. And Mount Pleasant looks to clinch their league title, but they would have to get a win over James Lick. We'll have the highlights next. I'm going to be a ballerina. Who had better, Emma? Answer to new. I'm going to be president. And the winner for president is Emma Williamson. <laughs> I'm gonna start a juice bar. Emma, the numbers are looking really good. You're gonna start a juice bar. At US Bank, we believe hard work works. And for everyone working toward a goal, we are here to help. Welcome to the Jeep Adventure Days sales event at South County of Gilroy. It's the Jeep Wrangler 4x4 Madness. Get dirty on the new 2018 Wranglers with $8,500 off MSRP. Off-road for less. What? The all-new 2020 Gladiators are here. You must see this award-winning beast. It's a Wrangler and a truck that can climb mountains and rip through snow and chase alligators and waves. That's right. South County of Gilroy, where the adventure began. Drive a little, save a lot. When I first came here, my goal was to be a contributing player on my high school's JV football team. The center actually not only helped me achieve my goals, but exceed even what I initially set out to do. I was able to continue playing football professionally through a lot of the things that I learned at the Riker Center. The Riker Center is a place to help you achieve your goals and then you know, tailor it to whatever the person's goals might be. We are back at the NBC Sports Studio with the Division I title game in NCS Volleyball. Yeah, the Bishop O'Dowd Dragons coming in as the top seed with Campolindo the second seed. And that was the matchup in the final game played on Saturday. It's our Diablo Motors NCS Monster Game and our Chiara Biagini was there. Monster Game, yeah. Two outstanding volleyball programs going head-to-head -head here in the Dragon Lair. It's O'Dowd hosting camp over the NCS D1 title. Both teams had perfect league seasons. O'Dowd won the WAC Foothill Division for the eighth year in a row. The Dragons feature senior outside hitter Michelle Owabede. The UC Santa Barbara commit has a 63 kill percentage, averaging six kills a set. For Campo, look for senior Audrey Pack, a dynamic setter going to UCLA next year. With the NCS D1 title, it's Campo and Bishop O'Dowd in our Diablo Motors Monster Game. The Dragons grab a seven-point lead late in the first. Isabel Yao weeks to Alexandria Hoagland to Kiani Allen for the kill. Campo pulls within one. Audrey Pack sets to Molly Mitchell. Mitchell slams it down, but it's set point for the Dragons. Michelle Oabede to Hoagland to LMU bound. Annabelle Pirota and O'Dowd takes the first set 25-22. Second set, Campo with the lead. Remember how I was talking about Audrey Pack? Yeah, Pack attack, but the Dragons take the lead. Perota to Augustina Santa Cruz to Michelle Oabede, and the seniors just warming up. Dragons take care of business. Weeks keeping the ball in play. Hoagland with the set, and Oabede with the hammer. Dragons take the second by seven points. Third set was a tight one. Tied 13 all. Check out this kill by Owabede. Not much you can do with that. Dragons lead by one. Campo keeping pace. Brianna Lee to pack to Aaron Thomas. And Thomas tips it over for the point. But it's match point for the Dragons. Michelle bumps. Santa Cruz sets. And Allen ends this match. Bishop O'Dowd wins the NCS Division I title with a three set sweep over Campolindo. That's a three P for senior Michelle Oabede. Michelle, how does it feel? It feels so good to end my senior year this way. With like our whole school here, so much love, so much support. I'm so proud of our team. We've gone through a lot. A lot of changes happened, a lot of ambition, a lot of work. We're not finished yet. We're still determined, still ready to go all the way. But it's really all about the chemistry and the camaraderie that we built. We're really a family. 
In Oakland with our Diablo Motors Monster Game, I'm Kiara Biagini, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Luke Landero sent his family honored with all the seniors at Mount Pleasant as the Cardinals meet James Lick very early on in this one. Toss it out to Marco Herrera who weaves through the defenders, pushes one aside and Marco races 55 yards, 7-0 Cardinals. James Lick had a really good season this year. This guy was a big reason why. Ricardo Pena with a big gain early 27 yards, but the Comets drive stalls. Cardinals back to work, play action pass as Ethan Hernandez fires to a wide open Alfredo Hernandez. A nice pass and catch and a 14-0 lead for Mount Pleasant at the half. Early third quarter, the Mount Pleasant D showing up large as Josh Romero gets into the backfield. But later in the third, the Comets close the gap. Angel Guerrero looking deep for Pena, who makes the catch, reverses field, and is tackled just short of the end zone. The Comets score on the next play, 14-7. But the Cardinals extend their lead here. Herrera in from short distance. It's 21-7 Cardinals. And then Herrera finishes just like he started. A huge hole created by lineman Daniel Hernandez and Luciano Flores signs. Bring Herrera for a 71-yard fourth quarter score. The Cardinals behind Marco's huge game take the West Valley Division title, a perfect 7-0 in league play. Each week, the Harker School celebrates its pursuit of academic excellence with the Scholar Athlete Award. This week, we honor Delmar kicker Maya Lou. Maya doing the job on the field and in the classroom with a perfect 4.0 GPA. Brought to you by the Harker School. This week, Harker congratulates its boys water polo team. The boys fought hard all season, pulling off some great victories in the Santa Clara Valley League Tournament, finishing the year with a 17-12 record. At Harker Preschool through 12th grade students, discover their passions. Learn more at harker.org. Coming up, the first place battle between Gunn and Homestead. But first, here is our Cupertino Electric Power Rankings for football. The 49ers Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Cupertino Electric, the company delivering power and possibilities and celebrating student athletes making a positive impact. By Invisalign, winning smiles start here. Learn more at Invisalign.com. And by the Sereno Group, here for good. Hi, I'm Lucy Wiedemeyer, longtime broker with Sereno Group. And my husband, Charlie Wiedemeyer, and I are longtime supporters of high school sports. Hi, I'm Kathleen Pazine with Sereno Group Real Estate, representing Palo Alto and the surrounding communities. I'm proud to support Bay Area High School sports on the 49er Cal High Sports Report. It's a log jam at the top of the El Camino division with three teams tied for first place going into Friday night's final league game. Gunn and Homestead tied with Saratoga for first place. The two teams battling for a share of the league title Friday night. Homestead taking the field against Gunn in a battle for the Santa Clara Valley El Camino division. Homestead gets on the board early. Nadim Zarora hands it to our player of the week, Jared Wade, and Wade takes it 15 yards in on the Mustangs' first drive for the seven-point lead. Second quarter, more Mustangs as Wade gets the handoff and sprints into the end zone untouched. Mustangs lead 14 to nothing. Seven minutes left in the first half. Gunn stays within reach. Aiden Everett hands it to Richard Jackson. Great blocking by the O-line, and Jackson falls in to make it a two-score game, but on the ensuing kickoff, Harold Rucker the third picks up the ball on the 10, finds a gap, and see ya! A 90-yard touchdown return for the senior Rucker taking it in. Rucker followed that up with a 90-yard rushing touchdown. It's 27-7 Homestead. More Mustang offense. Check out the reverse. Rucker the third in for his third touchdown in a very short period of time. Two-point conversion good. 28-point lead for the Mustangs. Two minutes left in the third. The D working hard all night. Chuck Rock strips the ball and the Mustangs take over on the gun 30-yard line. Homestead takes advantage of the turnover. Ryan Scudder scurries towards the end zone. He is in. Homestead getting it done on offense with a 42-21 win over gun to earn a share of the El Camino division title. 
The Los Gatos field hockey team is having another stellar season. The Wildcats meeting up with our Shanberries to talk about it at the Rikus Center this week. We're at the Rikus Center in Menlo Park, the premier training facility on the peninsula where goals are achieved. Hey, it's Shan here with the ladies of the Los Gatos field hockey team. <laughs> Congratulations, ladies. You guys just won the Santa Clara Valley De Anza League title. When was that moment for you guys when you realized, you know what, I think we're going to win this thing? Um, I don't really think we had a specific moment where we thought we were going to win. Uh, we don't really expect to win or anything based on our record or anything. Um, it's our coaches and our teammates who motivate us every game, and we play every game like it's going to be our last. And you guys have a huge team, I must say. Like, what is it like to play with such a deep roster? Um, it really creates a lot of motivation for every single player to fight for that spot on the field. We also have a lot of off season, so that encourages other play, uh, like our teammates, to keep on trying and getting better. Um, yeah, you guys have a lot of camaraderie. I see that you guys are, look like you guys have a lot of fun on that field as well. So here at Cal High Sports, we love to end with tradition. So give us some of those traditions from your team. Um, at the end of practice, before each game, we lay in a circle where we talk about like what we're going to focus on and the strategies for our game. And on top of that, we have a team sleepover at the end of tryouts where we make dances, watch a movie, and have dinner together. Oh, what? Can you show me one of the dance moves? <laughs> uh, they can. Uh, really? Okay, all right. I'm putting you guys on the spot. All right, all right. You'll show me off camera, right, ladies? <laughs> all right, give it up again for the ladies of the Los Gato Field Hockey Team! DGDG.com presents the Be Happy Play each week. This was a play in a game this week that made everybody happy. This week's Be Happy Play goes to... The Silver Creek Raiders Malik Jackson sacks the quarterback as the Raiders take home a share of the Santa Teresa Division title. And they were happy about that. Go to DGDG.com to find out how you could be a happy car buyer. Coming up, it's the Service by Medallion Play of the Week. Some great plays this week. We'll see who gets it next. But first, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rikus Center. I'm Andrew Havili, and today's training tip is a rear foot elevated lunge. Ben's going to line up in a lunge position with his back foot elevated on about a 12-inch box. He's then going to reach his opposite hand for the foot on the ground. As he comes down, it comes back up. As he goes down, though, pay attention to this knee that's on the ground. Make sure it doesn't come forward. It's going to go up and down. 10 times. If you want to progress it, you can jump. If you want to regress it, move the box out. And that's the rear foot elevated lunge. The winner of the Service by Medallion Play of the Week gets a whole bunch of prizes, a hat, a backpack, a very cool pair of headphones, and a ticket to our end of the season awards banquet at Levi Stadium. Did you see last week's Play of the Week? I did. Play of the Year? It was possibly? unbelievable. If you haven't seen it, go to YouTube. Yeah. Heverly. Josh Heverly. It's really good. Our Wesley Boone counts down the contenders, and then he will announce this week's Play of the Week. The week. Welcome to Plays of the Week. What a way to start off the list. Sarah going for two in the win. St. Ignatius says not today. Stops them short and gains a share of the league title in the process. The list rolls on. Branham, Nick Van Danza pumps, throws deep. Double coverage. Tristan Vagetam, wow, somehow comes down with it. We return to the Sarah St. Ignatius game. Terrence Laville, he was on top of this list a few weeks ago. Here he is again, a sick one-handed catch. And then our Play of the Week, Homestead's Harold Rucker III. We'll call him HR3. One cut, see ya. No one will catch him. 90 yards to the house. HR3, you just won Play of the Week. That's the Play of the Week, and that's our 49ers Cal High Sports Report for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. Join us next week. We'll share the story of the Los Altos water polo player and his battle with epilepsy. We'll see you then.